Hey everybody, welcome to Storm Talk. Way through these meteorologist Brian Good here on this uh, Wednesday. I got just the camera. I always feel like I'm really short for this, for this image because Ryan is so much taller than I am and uh, has to adjust the camera. Okay, yes, I am short. In case you didn't know that. All right, here's the latest look at Storm Board. Obviously, on the agenda will be the set for Friday, March first, and then perhaps March sixth. I'll try to cover as much ground on this as I can. First off, today. Odd setup here. We have a front that came through yesterday. It's kind of a stalled boundary, really, and it's fading out, but it's still laying across Ohio into Kentucky, and the showers are generating along that zone and then pushing off uh, to the east there. So drizzle showers, yeah, more of an issue again. Along and southeast of that boundary, Louisville will be right on the edge. Maybe some drizzle. Uh, when you look at the observations uh, across the area, you can definitely tell where the cloud cover, I mean, the satellite image glitches a bit there, but um, there's that fading boundary and a low pressure here to the south. So the two kind of working together. And that's why you see everything kind of condense or shrink. It's a forcing of the low pressure feeder band, if you will, um, here on the northern side of that low pressure. It's pushing into the boundary, that front to the north. And you kind of get that squeeze play going on over the Smoky Mountains. Kind of a nerd thing there. No one really cares. Anyway, here's the latest look at the observations. Notice Evansville is starting to get a bit of sun sh uh, shining through the uh, sensor there. Otherwise, cloudy skies elsewhere. And we broaden out the view a bit more, Indy is starting to see a bit of sun too, but where the clouds did thin out in this area, fog quickly replaced it. Now we've got to wait for the fog to break up, and that's where we'll get our partly sunny sky from today and get us to record levels in the lower 70s. I see that happening. It's going to be a process. You've got to be patient. And the more north and west you are, the better the chance will be to get sun. The more south and east you are, because of that stall boundary, not so much for you guys. Further to the west, this is our storm system. It's going to impact this Friday. It's now in the Rockies. And look at the next one. That's the one for March 1st. Already waiting for us in the Pacific Ocean. Let's talk about severe threats. First off, for today, no outlook. We're not expecting anything. For tomorrow, no outlook. Although, it could argue um, for the potential for maybe a few strong storms. I'll explain in a second. And then as we head into Friday, there we go. Slight risk for all of our counties. The enhanced or level three outlook right there, bumped up against our northern tier of counties. Uh, this is remarkable, guys. I mean, that first off, a slight risk, day five come out. And we've been talking about this for eight days now here on uh, on the blog. Uh, but for here about three days out and having enhanced on there, that's significant. And it's not so much that the, uh, the idea it's out on a day three, but it's the idea that it's out on a day three and in Ohio and Indiana. This is where you would expect a blizzard right now, not an enhanced area of severe weather. Reminds me of 2012 in a very scary way as far as how that spring was so active with severe weather. And I'm not referring to March 2nd exactly. I'm just saying that it started off pretty active in January and February, really. All right, so let's talk about future casts for tomorrow. This is where I think the models may play games with us here. Uh, we got this warm front surging in from the south. The models are not too keen on much other than a spotty shower or two. I will say that the soundings support enough instability that we could have a thunderstorm develop and it wouldn't surprise me to see a, a strong thunderstorm. What would be lacking is that the profile is not overly saturated in the right spots anyway for the severe potential. But um, we're going to keep an isolated thunderstorm chance in the forecast because I do see enough support and it's a warm front. They're notorious for causing issues at times for us. I don't see it being a big deal. All right, Let me make sure I'm clear on that. I just think it's something that we need to be aware of and just kind of keep an eye on it, and then we'll have an update later on. All right, so then it moves on by, and we get the warm air, blah, 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 we're having fun. Here we go into Friday. Friday itself, we look to still be capped most of the day, which means if you had a pot, a pot of beans boiling on the stove and you put a lid on it, the steam can't get out. I mean, it could get out in little corners, but it can't really get out in general. That's capped. You take the lid off, the steam, it's, it, the steam doesn't ease up when you take the lid off the, the the steam like flies up real fast, like a big burst. That's what happens when the cap breaks. And that's what we are expecting with thunderstorms Friday afternoon and evening. Where is that going to happen? Looks to be just northwest of Louisville, off of close to wave country. But during the day, we'll have the lid on. That means gusty winds, wind advisories are likely to be issued in our region with wind gust 45, maybe even 50 miles per hour. If we get it, a partly cloudy sky, remember what I said yesterday, partly sunny sky is more prone to gustier winds, gradient winds, than an all-day overcast. And I think we'll have a mix of sun and clouds, potentially. RPM is even trying to clear us out completely. It's too low in the numbers, though. It's got 75 
we will likely hit that 80 degree mark, which not only will be the warmest we've ever been in February, but it'll be the earliest we've ever hit 80 on record since the 1800s. That in itself is um, impressive. So we have the warm setup, then we get into the thunderstorm action. Now the RPM's trying to speed up a bit the thunderstorm potential for Friday night. What the problem is, is these were likely going to blossom as individual cells, and then they'll quickly merge into a line. It's like a last law as individual cells. So yes, there is a super cell potential, small ones, but the setup favors them quickly go into a squall line. Uh, but where those individual cells are, that's where your health threat will be, and perhaps even a brief tornado threat. Uh, otherwise, damage and wind threat would be more of an issue. But we got to watch this. Different modes happening there. When we have them initiate over our area or close to us, that usually raises my eyebrows anyway for potential for uh, more damage and weather could develop than what the models show. Then the front moves in later on. Here's the Schreff model plumes. Uh, you look at this in time. Uh, like here is uh, really, is this today? Yeah, today. Here is Thursday and here is Friday. 40 knots is what I look at in the spring and summertime for the potential for severe weather. So to have it close to that tomorrow, which I mentioned tomorrow on the warm front, it's worth watching, but certainly exceeds it on Friday. That is remarkable. And then we get into the Cape potential for tomorrow. I mean, 750 Cape, that's impressive for our area on the warm front. So again, I I don't want to play it up too big tomorrow even before Friday. I just want it to be overlooked. That's my concern. So I want to make sure I'm at least mentioning it. When you look at the dew point, normally we want to get 50 degree dew points in late February are sufficient for severe weather. 60 is what we look at as a benchmark once you get in the late spring and summer, and we're already going to be there. I mean, hovering there already, and we're 54 right now as a dew point. And the capes, the next couple of days, instability, they do get up there again, and you're at 750, and then they go just a bit higher as we head into Friday, and you see the core of that, pretty much where the enhanced risk is. The reason why the enhanced is north of us is because of the low pressure. You're going to have more of the winds backing, is what we call it, the wind, more t turning of the winds, better chance not only have straight line winds, but tornadoes, isolated tornadoes. And yeah, you may have greater instability at times, more to the south, but you don't have the wind fields just as prime. Then we get to the colder side of things, still see a chance for a bit of snow Sunday night into Monday. It doesn't like to be a big deal. Don't get too excited about this. Uh, we are going to drop below freezing Sunday night. Um, or in some spots here in Louisville, I think we'll stay above it. We'll be above freezing Sunday morning, but Sunday night we should stay above it. We'll watch it. I don't see it being a big issue, but and the issue is here. Even if we got anything wintry at all, period. Even if you flakes mixed in with rain, we're gonna have to wait long before our next system moves in. This is March first. Could be another uh, busy period on uh, March first. Welcome to spring, unofficially. 